Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Alonzo Duraldi, I'm back. William Viviani, episode four of Gotham, uh, Arkham, which I, I, in the pilot, I said, well, are we gonna get Arkham? And yeah. now they, they already we got it. Didn't make us wait too long. No, no. Let's go to a clip. I told you never to come back here. There's a war coming, I can help you. Trust me. Every legend has a beginning. Everything my parents worked for is now falling into the hands of criminals. Not everything. You want to be a woman with power? I'm looking for a weapon. you believe Gotham can be saved? This episode was a bit of an improvement on the last couple of weeks. I thought it had more focused storyline. It had, I mean, it wasn't an incredible mystery, but it had like a little bit of intrigue. It was a yeah. little bit more about the corruption. Yeah, I, I, watched, I enjoyed this one. I more. watched all three kind of in a concentrated dosage. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's been a roller a coaster. Loopy, um, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, like with, with Jada Pinkett Smith, I can't decide if she is one of the best actors on the show or one of the worst. <laughs> Or both. Like there's some scenes where I think she's just nailing it, where she really does the kind of just cool customer and really, yeah. you know, da da da. And then other times she's really kind of she's turning into Eartha Kit or something. She is doing Eartha Kit, isn't yeah. it? It's weird. Yeah. And like I like. Here's the thing. At the very least, she's fun to watch, even if oh, even sure. yeah, she's no, arguably no, 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 no. terrible. She's but always like, doing something on yes, camera. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I feel like. The thing is, when you, uh, most of the characters on the show, people like you know Harvey Bullock or, or Catwoman or, or Penguin, we have a certain sense of who they are coming in because because we're the audience and we sure. know Batman a little bit, or we probably wouldn't be watching. So. Fine, we get a little bit of, of the groundwork done for them. We have no idea who the hell Fish Mooney is. Mm. And because we don't know, like, does she have a tragic backstory? Is, she, is there something that we should be sympathizing with? Right. She just comes across more like a cartoonish Adam West villain than anything else. Yeah. So, like, and, and like, and I don't understand her her bizarre plan to get, I guess, someone to, like, seduce Carmine Falcone and uh, uh, and then kill him or something maybe, and that her plan is, well, I'm gonna audition singers. Like, maybe they're not gonna be good singers. Yeah. I, maybe uh, you should get someone who, unless like that's his thing, like Christopher Walken and Jersey Boys, <laughs> he's gonna hear his thing and be just gonna cry. It was like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have sex I, I with her. I there's a payoff, because they're really building this up a lot, and so far it does not make much sense. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I did think the idea of catfight between like, Smudgy, you know, blue mascara and textured uh, fishnets versus like, you know, Catherine McPhee was kind yeah. of an interesting. Uh, it was cute, but it was the same. It was the same uh, tryouts they had from The Dark Knight with the Joker, if you'll recall. Oh, that's we right. We only have oh, one yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. Whoever lives gets the gun. They shouldn't right. kill the, the lady, but sure, sure. it was very. It was a little derivative, especially considering it's like one of the more recent films. I thought. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like this episode, I I don't really have that much to say about it. It seemed very. Like, oh, it, that was okay. There, like, there's a lot of uh, lipstick lesbian stuff going on here. Well, yeah. Between Montoya and Barbara, and then, you know, Fish and the, the singing auditions, and her whole like, will seduce me. Yeah. Uh, which, fine, I guess th we've now reached that age where. That that we we that, 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 that you know, <laughs> fifty year, odd years of, of of queer civil rights have now made it safe for like teen boys to watch two women mac on each other in primetime television. So yes, yay, you know. Well, the other thing is, I remember, <laughs> I remember the era back in the old Ally McBeal days where mm. lesbian kiss was like all you'd talk about in Sweeps Week. Oh right, right, right. You know, yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah. lesbian Roseanne, kiss on Ally yeah. McBeal. Oh my God, you know, set that up for two weeks in the commercials. Oh my God. Uh, now it's just it's sort like, of like eh. now it's a cheesy <laughs> side plot. I will say this: I'm glad they didn't stretch it out too long. Sure, you know it's like now it's been revealed. Maybe we can actually deal with that as mm -hmm. opposed to have it be a dirty little secret, which well, I was a little offended by. I, well, what I like though is the fact that Gordon, Jim Gordon, is very explicit about it. it's. I'm not mad that you were with a woman. I'm mad that you lied with to me about being with this woman who I hate. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know? I know this person. It'd be like if, it'd be like anyone like you're getting married to, right. and you found out that they used to date your best friend and they never told you. But yeah, that should have come up yeah, by now. Like, but that's yeah. so that's the issue, and not the yeah. lesbian thing. Which so that I think is yeah. a step forward, and I, I like the sort of like we're not going to make a big deal about right. that aspect of yeah. it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Penguins Crossing. 
<laughs> the first thing I thought of was, you know, he's supposed to kill this guy. He didn't, and then he comes back and says, "Hey, Jim! Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my old friend Jim. How you doing?" It's like, um, he's moving up the chance. chance. He's moving up the ranks quickly. I didn't know it was that easy to get a restaurant in Gotham. Well, you know, I kind of, I, I sort of like the idea that in this version of the Gotham universe, maybe Oswald Cobblepot will discover that he really likes running a restaurant. Well, he and did. Instead of instead of being a criminal now, he'll just become like you know a celebrity chef. And a lot of versions <laughs> of of the comic comic book and the, and, the, and the character, he owns like his own restaurant and club. He owns a very fancy right, right, right. restaurant. He, he was a legitimate businessman in a way that most villains never were. Like mm. he had a public face. So I actually do like that. Maybe it will like, because he's, he's really vile right now. He's really <laughs> just ratty and mean and sadistic. And, and, it's hard a, to, and a suck up. And a suck up. <laughs> and it's a little hard to reconcile that with the type of villain that he's typically characterized as. And mm -hmm. you're right, maybe this would be an interesting sort of twist. I, I kind of like the idea of a super villain who gets a day job and still gets to be a super villain, <laughs> but actually likes his day job. Sure, like, yeah. That'd be kind of cool. That's I kind of like that. He fits well, in in the off hours. And that's yeah. the kind of detail that I think is missing. A lot of this show is being told in very, very broad strokes. Sure. Like everything with, with uh, Selena Kyle. It's just like, get it, she's gonna be Catwoman. It's like, no, like, what's she doing now? What's she right. up to? How does she feel at this point in her life? That, that's like, a, that's a danger of sort of retrofitting anything where, yeah. like, you know, you know the end point, so whether or not you fill in a lot of the blanks along the way is sort of, you know, up to you and, and sometimes People get lazy about that sort of thing. I, I I do admire the level of guest star they're getting on this show. Pretty good, right? I mean, Lily Taylor and Frank Whaley and they were Richard good. For a second, I thought the first singer mm -hmm. was Rachel Weisz. <laughs> It looked like Rachel Weisz. I'm like, wow, this I, show's really, oh, no, no not no, her, no, okay, no, never mind. Not, not, yeah. not so much. Someone made a point uh, in one of the comments I wanted to bring up, because it was a legitimate point, that we keep bringing up all of the foreshadowing Batman stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and how distracting it is, and how it's over the hand, over the top, and how it's, it feels like it's setting us up for something they're never gonna be able to give us because of the nature of the show. Sure. And they said that this is actually supposed to be a cop show, and it just that's just sort of the backdrop no, of it. I'll and tell that's, you. that's a legitimate thing, but I feel like they're just calling so much attention to it, we can't. I, I was say, no, I agree with the idea of this being a cop show. I wish Bruce Wayne weren't a character on it. Yeah. I think I That's kinda, what's preventing it from I, feeling like yeah, a cop I show. Yeah, I feel like every time we cut back to Wayne Manor, it's like, uh. Like we know, it, we know nothing yeah. big is going to happen, and we know where it's all going eventually. So I, yeah. I kind of wish, like he had shown up in the pilot, you know, witnessed the passion play, mm -hmm. which is the murder of the Waynes, yeah. and then gone away. And you know, I feel like, like he should have been a prop. You know, like he should have been like he should have been trotted out at any public event and then whisked away. Right, looking you know, sad, you like, know? like the, that should have been fine. Yeah, the, he's this sort of presence yeah. that we know about and he's occasionally mentioned. Yeah. And of course, the Waynes are going to be mentioned mm -hmm. constantly. But him as a character, we don't need in this show, and he, I think he's just yeah. distracting. No, and 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 the, uh, one of the reasons why I like this episode better is because for the most part, it does operate as not a particularly great cop show, mm -hmm. but a perfectly entertaining cop sure. show. There's corruption, there's killers, and you know, oh, which crime boss hired them? Maybe both. How right. is that? A little bit. Not complicated, the but clues a little are kind interesting. Of, the clues are kind of stupid. The weapon yeah. is kind of stupid. But you're right. Yeah. It's at least a, it is a policier and some. Yeah, it some could work and... outside of the Batman universe. Totally. And, but putting it in the Batman universe and using you know iconography like Arkham Asylum mm -hmm. that we know makes it a little bit more interesting. And I think that's a good direction for the show. I hope we see more of this and that they get to evolve this and get better at yeah, it. Yeah, and, and I, I, I like the fact that Gotham is such a cesspit that every <laughs> time you think you're going to get like two steps forward, there's a step backward, yeah. you know? And, and 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 so the show's not afraid to be kind of not just visually dark, but but sort of uh, cynical about the world and about this sort of corrupt place. Uh, the architecture is kind of driving me nuts. Hmm. All the the interiors are also overdone. Yeah, like the Gotham PD with all the turrets and the, yeah. the catwalks and whatever. Yeah. And then you've got Wayne Manor, and then you've got Gordon's giant apartment, and it's like. I think I think it's Barbara's giant apartment. Oh well, yeah, you're right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, production design is a big part of any sort of Batman story. People have treated Gotham City as a character for so long that some people go a little nuts with it. For me, and I brought this up in an earlier episode when you weren't here, uh, the graffiti budget on this movie, <laughs> on the show must be insane. It's everywhere outside, and it's probably a really easy way to hide, you know, like big Los Angeles signs. Yeah, or exactly, or whatever the previous show this was. Yeah, yeah but I mean, you're right. I mean, I think it's certainly Tim Burton kind of set everybody on the path of like, let's mm. get. But uh, you know, I think that. You have to then make a movie that you know. You, you have to have characters that are equally as baroque as the architecture. So mm -hmm. if you have all this crazy architecture, but then it's going to be about the cops and they're all wearing suits and yeah. everybody's there's no sort of 
you know, there's no Joker, there's no like big yeah. over the top kind of villain. It it makes it it calls more attention to and itself. And a done in one Batman story, or like you know, the more episodic nature of the animated series or the early Tim Burton movies, you can get away with just playing it up big, like making it really operatic and just let that play. But you know, in an extended character-driven TV series, you actually right. need to let the characters drive it and not distract from them too much with artifice and and design. Like I just want to want to. I kind of want. This would have been fine if it had looks, you know, like the Christopher Nolan Gotham as Chicago thing. Sure. Where it's just, it just yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. a city. Th this fine. is not a guy, because yeah, I think this, pretty, is, though. This, is, this version of Gotham is not one that a giant penny is going to show up in. You know, or a giant typewriter, or a giant dinosaur. I would love it if they threw in the giant penny somewhere. I just, I, just, but I'm just, 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 just like, where do you want this giant penny? But oh, it, but, we'll use it later. But, but it, 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 what I'm saying is it would clash with this specific <laughs> vision of Gotham, and yeah. so I think so does a lot of the, the, the interior designs. But, you know, yeah. that... You're right. This this show I think is maybe starting to sort of find its footing a little. It takes some, getting it takes a little the balance bit of, time. of yeah yeah yeah. Every yeah. show I think now we, we we give them six episodes and yeah. see where it goes. So uh, right. we will continue to do that, and we hope you'll join us for the next one. Bye.